This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. And we are coming back on the air right now because we are told that the Attorney General Loretta Lynch will appear momentarily right there at the Justice Department. Of course, she is going to speak on that horrific shooting overnight in Dallas when at least one sniper targeted police officers, attacking 14 of them, killing five, injuring seven police officers, two civilians injured as well last night in Dallas. There is a shooter identified, Micah Xavier Johnson, 25 years old, an Army reservist from Mesquite, Texas. Uh, he was killed by police after several hours of negotiations. Three other suspects are now in custody as well, but officials in Dallas not saying much about why those suspects are in custody, what they are saying. They are saying that the suspects are being tight-lipped and law enforcement officials being tight-lipped about that uh, as well. I want to go to Matt Gutman, who is on the scene uh, in Dallas right now. The entire city right now, an active crime scene. Exactly, George. I mean, the crime scene itself probably spans about 20 square blocks. And we just walked over there to survey the area, and there are literally dozens of crime scene and, uh, and evidence cones scattered about this area. Cops are everywhere. There are officers on every single street corner. And we got to see the spot where the apparently the C4 explosives were used to neutralize that sniper in the second story of uh, El Centro College. The blast so powerful there not only shattered the windows of that building, but shattered the windows across the street as well. And right beneath that shooting galley where they're apparently sniping at officers are at least two squad cars shot to pieces. And at least one of the officers was killed in those squad cars and we saw bullet casings and bullet holes from that alleged sniper at least 100 yards away so this is a massive crime scene and officers the FBI ATF others are still meticulously trying to comb through it and figure out what happened and, and one officer with whom I spoke said this is the first time that she's actually been afraid to come to work because she doesn't know who else is out well, there who else is out there that's the, the the police chief made that point as well also Micah Johnson had said that he had planted explosives around the site as well but so far police have found nothing correct no, they found nothing so far that we've been able to tell, but the officers with whom I spoke said that what they have seen, the video they've seen of this alleged shooter, he seemed to walk around and move very tactically like he was militarily trained. And of course, we've now learned that Johnson was a military reservist, but so far we've understood that they have found no explosives at the scene of the crime, George. Pierre Thomas, you cover the Justice Department, our senior justice correspondent. The Attorney General has now uh, delayed the statement a couple of times this morning. This is quite personal to her as well. Exactly, George. Uh, she wants to express great support uh, for law enforcement in this time of sorrow. And also, she knows this comes against the backdrop of those uh, fatal police shootings involving uh, men of color. So she's got to thread the needle today to talk about uh, both these scenarios. But she will be talking about the support that the FBI and other law enforcement agencies at the federal level will be giving uh, the Dallas P PD to help them solve this. And again, they still have a situation where they have the name and ID of the deceased suspect. But you also have to make sure that he has no associates or uh, anyone else who was willing to help him. These three suspects, we yet don't know if they will be charged. They could have been just caught up in this, and it's a fluid situation, and they could be released. Uh, these situations are fluid. That often happens. But the, fight, the fact that they were tight-lipped gives law enforcement some pause, and believe me, no one's going anywhere until law enforcement knows everything they feel like they need to know. Can't take any chances with that. The Attorney General not expected to take any questions. Pierre, any possible concrete policy announcements today? Well, one of the things I'm looking for is whether she announces whether this is going to be a civil rights investigation. Uh, if you take the suspect at his word that he killed uh, police officers because they were white or that he wanted to kill, quote, white people, uh, that is an avenue that she can pursue. Uh, again, there are so many things that remain fluid here, but I think the attorney general wants to speak to the nation in part because she realizes that this is a pivotal moment, that this is a week that many hope we would never see, but we're yet having it again. John Carl at the White House, the president has already spoken out twice in the last 24 hours on these shootings. First, the shootings in Louisiana and Minnesota, and early this morning on the shootings in Dallas as well. He's overseas uh, on what was supposed to be a several-day trip. Any, any indication yet on whether those plans are changing? There's active consideration to cutting that trip short, George. No decision has been made. But you heard in the president's words about this shooting in Dallas calling it vicious, calculated, despicable. Uh, and now we hear from the Attorney General. 
Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. Last night, at least five police officers were shot and killed. Several more were injured, along with two civilians, as they sought to protect a peaceful protest in Dallas, Texas. Our thoughts and our prayers and condolences go out to the families of those who have lost loved ones. The Department of Justice, including the FBI, ATF, the U.S. Marshals Service, and the U.S. Attorney's Office on the scene is working closely with our state and local counterparts, and we intend to provide any assistance that we can to investigate this attack and also to help heal a community that has been severely shaken and deeply scarred by an unfathomable tragedy. This is an unfolding situation. We'll be providing additional information when it is available and appropriate. But more so, this has been a week of profound grief and heartbreaking loss. The peaceful protest that was planned in Dallas last night was organized in response to the tragic deaths of Alton Sterling in Louisiana and Philando Castile in Minnesota. Now we've opened a civil rights investigation in Louisiana and we're providing assistance to local authorities in Minnesota who are leading the investigation there. And today we are feeling the devastating loss in da of Dallas area Rapid Transit Officer Brent Thompson and four other fallen officers whose names remain unreleased as we await notification to all of the families. Now after the events of this week, Americans across our country are feeling a sense of helplessness, of uncertainty, and of fear. And these feelings are understandable and they are justified, but the answer must not be violence. The answer is never violence. Rather, the answer, our answer, all our answer, must be action. Calm, peaceful, collaborative, and determined action. We must continue working to build trust between communities and law enforcement. We must continue working to guarantee every person in this country equal justice under the law. And we must take a hard look at the ease with which wrongdoers can get their hands on deadly weapons and the frequency with which they use them. And we must reflect on the kind of country that we want to build and the kind of society that we are choosing to pass on to our children. And above all, we must reject the easy impulses of bitterness and rancor and embrace the difficult work, but the important work, the vital work, of finding a path forward together. And above everything, we must remind ourselves that we're all Americans, and that as Americans, we share not just a common land, but a common life. Not just common goals, but a common heart and soul. And those we've lost this week have come from different backgrounds, different neighborhoods, but today they're mourned by officers, by residents, by family and friends, by men and women and children who loved them who needed them and who will miss them always. They are mourned by all of us. To the families of all who've lost their lives in this series of tragedies, we share your pain and your loss. To our brothers and sisters who wear the badge, I want you to know that I am deeply grateful for the difficult and dangerous work that you do every day to keep our streets safe and our nation secure. Our hearts are broken by this loss. And the Department of Justice will do all that we can to support you in the days ahead. And to those who seek to improve our country through peaceful protest and protected speech, I want you to know that your voice is important. Do not be discouraged by those who would use your lawful actions as a cover for their heinous violence. We will continue to safeguard your constitutional rights and to work with you in the difficult mission of building a better nation and a brighter future. And to all Americans, I ask you, I implore you, do not let this week precipitate a new normal in this country. I ask you to turn to each other, not against each other, as we move forward. Let us support one another. Let us help heal one another. And I urge you to remember, today and every day, that we are one nation, we are one people, and we stand together. May God bless the families and the loved ones of all who were taken from us this week and comfort their grief with his everlasting grace. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Attorney General, will you please take some questions? Here goes the Attorney General, a plea for understanding, healing 
from the Attorney General right there, speaking to what she called the sense of helplessness, uncertainty, and fear all across the United States right now. And Sonny Hostin is here with me, our senior legal correspondent. I'm sure those words hit home in so many homes today. Helplessness, uncertainty, fear. Uh, they did, and, and, and what struck me was that sh there was a call for collaboration, collaborative action. There was a, a call for trust between police and communities, and um, that this is an American problem. And I think that's very important because I think we've seen over the past few days selective outrage. There should be, uh, you know, outrage across all of America for all of the lives lost. And, and so I, I think that was. Um, very clear in her message to the American people. I also think, George, it's important to note that she's the Attorney General. She is the top law enforcement officer for our country. Um, and she's also was a, a top prosecutor here in the Eastern District of New York. I interviewed with Loretta Lynch. And so she's a career prosecutor and w uh, someone that works with law enforcement officers day in and day out. And, and so I course, think her message certainly was one of community and peace. And part of the investigation right now as well. So many answers still being sought on what exactly happened in Dallas, who was behind it and why. We do know there was at least one shooter who has been taken down by police. And now we have a picture of that man as well, Micah Johnson. Micah Xavier Johnson, 25 years old, a former Army reservist. That is from his Facebook page right there. He was taken down by police after several hours of negotiations. What they learned from him is that he said he wanted to kill white people, especially white police officers. Police now have three in custody trying to figure out if everyone who is involved in this uh, is now in custody right now and the situation is truly safe. We're going to go off the air for right now, but there'll be much more tonight on World News. Uh, David Muir will be in Dallas. You can get the latest anytime on ABCnews.com. There'll be a special edition of 2020 tonight at 9 Eastern. I'm George Stephanopoulos in New York. Have a good day. This has been a special report from ABC News.